So for those of you who don't know NYSERDA, uh, we are the New York State Energy Research Development Authority. We're a public benefit corporation, and we offer objective information, analysis, innovation, uh, innovative programs, technical expertise, and support to help New Yorkers increase energy efficiency, save money, uh, use renewable energy, and reduce the reliance on fossil fuel. Um, one thing that uh, is driving everything in which I just said is um, the New York Climate Leadership and Community Protection Act. I'm going to call it the Climate Act because uh, it's a lot easier to say in a short period of time. Uh, the Climate Act is really the most aggressive um, legislation that was passed in the state of New York for us to decarbonize uh, uh, and uh, our footprint here in New York State. Um, and it is uh, got a lot of uh, elements to it of which that I'm going to dig into in the following slides. Um, so basically, as you can see, um, the Climate Act, uh, what we what our aim is in the Climate Act and what we're going to achieve by law is a 40 percent reduction in emissions by 2030 and 100 percent zero emission electricity by 2040. Um, of that zero emission electricity by 2040, there's individual mandates within that. We have a 70% renewable electricity by 2030. So by 2030, um, our power grid has to be supplied by renewables, 70% uh, of it. We have 9,000 megawatts of offshore wind mandated by 2035. 10,000 megawatts of distributed solar by 2025. Much of that is run through our New York Sun program and 6,000 megawatts of energy storage by 2030, which was a state of the state um, mandate by Governor Hochul last year. Um, and right now, NYSERDA and Department of Public Service are putting together a roadmap, which we're going to establish how we're going to achieve that. And then 185 thermal British units on site energy savings by 2025. So those are um, the Climate Act by the numbers. Um, now I'm gonna get into some areas of which um, we've made some advancements in achieving those goals. So I'm gonna focus on the next two slides on our large scale renewable program. Um, Recently, we've had um, contracts that we've procured totaling over 3,000 megawatts of, of renewable energy, enough to power uh, Buffalo, Rochester, Syracuse, and Albany. So that's a lot of power, obviously. That's dispersed over 46 projects. Um, it's solar, it's wind, and it's hydro. Um, so we've got a lot going on there with our large-scale renewable uh, portfolio. Within that similar portfolio, this is really exciting and something that we haven't seen in 50 years, was what we call Tier 4. And what Tier 4 is essentially, as you can see on that map, we're as the governor once said, we have extension cords going from the north and bringing renewable hydropower to the south, primarily New York City. It's enough to deliver uh, 18 million megawatt hours of clean energy per year, um, or more than a third of New York City's annual electric consumption. I mean, we have offshore wind solicitations um, and building going on that's going to happen within the New York City and Long Island region. But quite honestly, um, most of our load is coming from the southern part of New York State. So we have to take uh, renewables that are much cheaper in the northern part, and we have to uh, bring them down to the southern part of the state. And that's what this is about. And this is firm power. It's, um, it's not intermittent. It's going to be firm power coming from the north to the south. Um, so you could see some economics there in those bullets. Uh, but what's maybe interesting to this audience is that uh, NYSERDA will all also offer renewable attributes, better known as uh, renewable energy credits, RECs, from these projects for voluntary purchase to New York City building owners and organizations. So this is a very big deal. Um, it's a lot of work. It takes some time, um, but we're really excited about that uh, to enhance our renewable energy portfolio. Um, now I'm going to get into the distributed solar and energy storage portion of the Climate Act. Um, the 10,000 megawatts of distributed solar by 2030, that's through our New York Sun program. Um, the New York Sun program is really moving quickly and it's doing a very good job and it's actually ahead of schedule. 
right now um, we've got about four gigawatts of, of um, distributed solar in the state of New York, um, which is well on its way to um, the 10 megawatt, 10 gigawatt goal, because there's another close to th over three gigawatts within our pipeline. So when you look at the two, um, we, we've already got six, uh, over six gigawatts, uh, you know, in, uh, ready to go uh, and installed. So we're, we're really getting to that 2030 goal. And I think we're going to get there quicker um, than 2030. On the energy storage side, um, what I said earlier is Governor Hochul's state of the state proposal of 6,000 megawatts of energy storage by 2030. And as I said earlier, both um, the team at NYSERDA is working with a Department of Public Service team to put together a roadmap that we're going to get out this year um, that's going to um, chart a path to get to six gigawatts by 2030. And then what happens is the Public Service Commission um, approves uh, that order or does not approve that order. It's up to their to their decision making. Um, and we move forwards from there after they address that, that petition. Um, energy efficiency um, is a really big component, obviously, of what we have to do uh, if we're going to increase uh, renewables and decrease our carbon footprint. It's important that we try to um, make the envelope of, of our buildings, both residential and commercial, very tight. Um, so when you see our new efficiency New York program, it's a $3.3 billion program uh, in accelerated utility investments authorized in 2020 all the way through 2025. And that includes 450 million targeted at building electrification, better known as heat pumps. Um, that's going to be a big component of the next slide. Um, also, NYSERDA has its clean energy fund with uh, $2 billion over over $2 billion um, for 10 years to help um, incentivize uh, projects for energy efficiency. So we've got a lot going on on renewables and efficiency, and I'm going to get into a little more um, in this presentation. Looking at building electrification, uh, it is a must that as our renewables come online. I think, you know, I, in a prior slide you, I showed you, we need to get to 70% renewable energy, providing our electricity on our grid. And because we're cleaning up and ridding fossil fuel and cleaning up our electricity supply, we want to transition our buildings and automobiles from fossil fuel to electricity, because then they're going to run off renewable energy. So building electrification is an absolute must and a focus for us. Um, and electric heat pumps are going to deliver greater efficiency, uh, emission reductions as electricity becomes cleaner, as I just mentioned. So that's a really important part of our plan uh, moving forwards. And I'm sure a lot of this audience knows a lot about that and has looked into that. Um, not only do we need to um, electrify our, our buildings and get them off fossil fuel, but as everybody knows, there's electric vehicles, right? Um, we want to take those off fossil fuel. Um, and as our grid gets cleaner, we want to charge our automobiles and medium to heavy duty vehicles um, so that we can clean our environment even further. In, uh, in September, uh, Governor Hochul signed legislation with 100% light duty and off-road equipment, zero emission vehicles sales by 2035. So that's 2035, uh, we can only buy um, electric uh, or zero emission vehicle, light duty vehicles. And we're looking at the same goal for 2045 for the medium and heavy duty zero emission vehicles. So it's a lot of work. We have our work cut out for us, uh, but we're up to the challenge and uh, excited to see um, that transition, which is really happening pretty quickly uh, as we see it now with a lot of electric vehicles on the road. Um, DEC has released a proposal, right? proposed regulations that would mirror California's advanced clean trucks rule. And that's requiring an increasing percentage of new trucks sold to be zero emission vehicles. And New York State is making investments in more than 1 billion electric vehicles and charging stations. And I think you probably heard Con Edison's presentation before and touched on um, the Make Ready program. So um, drilling down a little bit here into uh, the clean transportation 
transition. This is the truck voucher incentive program we have at NYSERDA. This is funded through the Volkswagen settlement money that came to New York State. We have a little over 57 million uh, in incentive money uh, to support medium and heavy duty trucks, transit buses, school buses, and some repowers. Um, they're vouchers to reduce the upfront purchase cost and accelerate or eliminate the payback. Um, it brings together vehicle manufacturers, dealers, and fleets to get cleaner trucks and buses off the road. And there's a scrappage regulation that comes with that Volkswagen settlement money um, that um, vehicles 2009 or, or earlier need to be scrapped. Uh, every vehicle that needs to be scrapped for every new uh, zero emission vehicle that comes on the road. So um, the last slide on our clean transportation section here in the presentation is really about if you wanna buy an electric vehicle. Um, NYSERDA provides rebates that go to the dealer in which you buy that vehicle from, and that reduces the cost of your car. So those of you who already bought electric vehicle know what I'm talking about. Those of you, the rest of you who are going to buy one, <laughs> um, you're gonna have, you have the ability to uh, have a NYSERDA rebate that goes directly to the dealer that lowers the cost of the car for you. So um, there's some EV charging programs. I'm not gonna get too into details here, but it cuts across the sector here. What I talked about our make ready program. And I think you heard Con Edison talk about that. They cover a lot of the cost, uh, what we call behind the meter, behind the charger, everything that leads to the charger. Um, they chip in to help that cost uh, quite a bit lower. Um, New York Power Authority, NYPA, also has a charging program up to $250 million for DC fast chargers and fleet charging statewide. They try to concentrate on areas where the private market is not concentrating on so that we have a distribution of fast chargers around the state. And then NYSERDA has two charging programs. There's Charge Ready which is a level two incentive program. Um, we're going to roll out uh, right now. Uh, we're in between solicitations. We're going to roll out a new program soon on that one. And similarly, the same with our DC fast charger program. Uh, we're going to have a third solicitation uh, there um, to, to um, deploy more DC fast chargers around the state of New York. Um, one of our uh, hallmark programs at NYSERDA is New York Sun. New York Sun is a uh, making solar affordable for basically all New Yorkers. It, we provide incentives and financing for homes and businesses and providing a range of offerings to make going solar more affordable. We have what's called a megawatt block program. It's a live dashboard on our site. If you Google New York Sun dashboard, you'll see it. And um, if you're a business or a home, um, you can um, get solar in, in many different ways. Um, you can get rooftop solar, you can get community solar, um, you could do remote crediting. There, there's so many different options that I highly recommend you go to our website that has a lot of information there for any use case uh, that, might be, uh, that might be your use case. We also have uh, a lot of support for local government. Uh, we provide resources and training and tools and assistance to help local governments and jurisdictions uh, identify opportunities and really mitigate barriers uh, so that solar programs can work for those communities keeping their community character intact. Community solar is huge now in New York State. As a matter of fact, we have the most thriving community solar program in the country by far. Um, we have well over one gigawatt of community solar projects and the beauty of community solar is it allows anybody in the state to subscribe to a solar project and reap the benefits of clean energy and save money on your bill if you don't have the uh, possibility to install solar on your own property. You could be a renter or live in a multifamily dwelling um, or you have too much shade. So community solar is an offer for anybody in the state. And again, uh, check out any information you want on our website. Um, as I said, um, some of the projects, you could put it on your roof. Uh, there's community solar, remote credited solar, meaning um, maybe you have you can't put uh, solar on your property, but there's another piece of property you could put it on. Um, you could install it anywhere and have those electrons and credits uh, credit your bill in a different location. 
So we have a lot of projects. Um, and as I said, we're pretty far ahead of schedule in uh, achieving our goals in the New York Sun program. Um, we take workforce development really seriously and understand the value of economic development at NYSERDA. You can see we have more than 157,000 clean energy jobs, and that was in 2020. So obviously, uh, it's quite a bit more than that now uh, in the state of New York. And you can see the breakdown there on the slide where those jobs are. Um, and so if you have any, if you're a business and you need help with workforce development, we offer a, rally, a lot of really good programs where we help pay uh, for apprentices and um, new employees uh, in the clean energy sector. So I encourage you to look at our workforce development website uh, on, on our uh, nice sort of site. So um, here is some slides that are, um, I don't think I'm going to go through them because um, I thought, Ron, this would be good for people who want to have the, um, the yeah. presentation afterwards. And there are different links and uh, programs so that you could look at so that you can find out what might suit the needs of your business uh, and or home. Um, but I'll stop there, Ron, and see if there's any questions or if you'd like to add anything. 